sequences and series, um, which are two very different things, and you need to make sure you keep straight, which is which. Um, we're going to start with sequences. We'll get into series a little bit down the road. Um, but some of this is going to feel very familiar to you because you did, I think, explicit formula. If you took algebra one here, okay, I believe you did explicit formulas. I feel like Mr. Samuelson doesn't do the recursive formulas. Have you heard of a recursive formula? Maybe not. Um, so some of it will be new. Some of it will be like, yep, I've done this before um, to a degree. So there should be some familiarity there. Uh, we're going to start with one of my favorites, the Fibonacci sequence, just to introduce what a sequence is. Um, so you look at that set of numbers, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. Um, can you figure out the rule? Do you know what that is? Yeah, go ahead. Isn't it from those first two numbers? Oh, we're both going. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Catalina. It's like when the first two numbers add to get the number that follows that. Right, so you add these two numbers together to get this one. You add these two numbers to get that one. You add these two to get that, right? So you're adding two numbers together to get the one right behind it, okay? Um, that's a sequence. There is just an ordered list of numbers. There's something happening consistent there, okay? Um, a term of a sequence is each number that comes in that sequence. So this is a term, this is a term, this is a term, this is a term. Um, it's your first term, your second term, your third term, your fourth term, your fifth term, your sixth term, right? There's all these terms in a sequence. Um, so the notation for this stuff is probably the part that can get the most confusing for some. Um, so just keep in mind, we say this a sub one, okay? Sub being we're dropping down that one, right? A sub one, um, that's your first term in the sequence. A sub two is representing your second term. A sub eight is representing your eighth term. So when you see an A sub N, it's representing any term um, we would end up plugging a number into that. So it's your nth term, okay? A sub a million is your millionth term, okay? Um, what you're gonna see a little bit of is this, okay? A sub n minus one is basically saying your fifth term minus one would be your fourth term, okay? So A sub n minus one is the term before whatever nth term you're talking about, okay? A sub n minus one is the term before. Okay, so we're gonna start with talking about what an explicit formula is. An explicit formula um, is gonna describe our nth term using n as a placeholder, um, walking through what n would be. So if I said find the first six terms of the sequence, all you're really doing here is you're saying, a sub one equals, what do you suppose you plug in for this n? One. one, right? I'm saying the first term is three times one. These n's are the same number, okay? So if you plugged a one in here, you need to plug a one in here. So three times one minus five. So my first term is negative two, okay? Um, it says find the first six. So now we're going to find the second term. A sub two is going to be three times two, right? This number is what we're plugging in, minus five. So six minus five is one. So I get negative two. I get one. Now find the third term. A sub three is three times three minus five. What do you get? four. Okay. Um, stop and take a look. Do you see a pattern to get from here to here to get from here to here? What's happening? You're adding three. Okay. Now look at your fourth term. Three times four minus five, 12 minus five is seven. Are we still following that pattern? Yeah. When that pattern is consistent, you can just 
give your next numbers from the pattern if you want, right? So I know right now that a sub 5 is going to equal what? 10. And I know that a sub 6 is going to equal 13. Okay, so once you find a consistent pattern, you cannot do it right here, right? It is plus 3, but there's a lot of other options you could do to get there. But once you see that I'm always adding 3, if you want, you can just follow the pattern, okay? Um, so the first six terms is what they asked us for. That means our answer is all of this, right? Those are the first six terms of our sequence, okay? Um, what do you do for the 20th term? Just plug in 20, right? A sub 20, our 20th term, is 3 times 20 minus 5. So 60 minus 5 is 55. Okay, so they gave us the explicit formula, and we just had to figure out what our first six terms were. Yes, Jada. Why did I put the 20 where? The minus 5 comes after. 3 times your end value, minus 5, right? We're just plugging it into this formula. So 3 times 20 minus 5. Um, the parentheses were just to show multiplication. It's not, you're not doing anything in those parentheses. It's just a number there. Am I, is that making sense? Okay. Um, okay. Example two. These are the ones that I feel like people struggle with the most because um, they can kind of be a little difficult to come up with. You have to figure out what's going on. Some of them are very simple. Other ones not as simple. So don't get frustrated with them. Try different things. Try exponents. Try adding. Try subtracting. Try division. It's, it's kind of a, there's a little bit of trial and error to it. There's also some methods that I will give you. Um, sometimes I think it's helpful if you're trying to write an explicit formula, if you set it up as a t-chart, because how you want to relate these is to their term number, right? So my first term is three. My second term is four. My third term is five. So if it makes more sense to you to like think of this as like an X and a Y, okay? It's not an X and a Y, but that's how we set up our T chart typically. I mean, you can think of it as an X and a Y, I guess. Um, it's usually N is our term number, and then we get our value from that. So if my first term is three, and my second term is four, and my third term is five, and my fourth term is six, and my fifth term is seven, and my sixth term is eight, okay? Um, we're trying to come up with a formula that will get us our hundredth term if we needed our hundredth term, okay? Um, I think what's tricky about these is people see this and they go, oh, it's just plus one. So n plus one, is our formula, which is not true, okay? So be careful not to just look at how the numbers follow each other. Um, there is a relationship happening with the term number. So with this number to get to here, and with this number to get to here, and three to five, and four to six, and five to seven, and six to eight. So what are we doing to the term number to get our term? We're adding two, okay? Um, so when we write a formula, we're going to say our a sub n, okay, that's always going to be our unknown, a sub n, we don't have a particular one we're solving for, equals, um, what would your formula be then? n, right, our term number, plus 2. So this is your explicit formula, not n plus 1, okay? Yes, if you just look at it, we were going up by one each time, but it's what did we do to our term number? We want to be able to plug in 100 here. And if I plugged in 100, my number would not be 101. It would be 102, okay? Um, okay. Take a look at this one. 
Letter B. This one's a little tricky. This would be more like a bonus question on your test. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Take a look at what's happening, okay? This is your first term. This is your second term. This is your third term. This is your fourth term. Now you do have some experience with these numbers. In the last couple chapters, we've seen these numbers a lot with what we've done. I'm not gonna point you in that direction quite yet, but our formula is a sub n equals something. So how does this relate to a two, or this relate to four, or this relate to eight, or this relate to 16? Noah? Two to, that. two to that power, right. So two to the first power is two. Two to the second power is four. Two to the third power is eight. And two to the fourth power is 16, okay? Notice it is not n to the second power. We're taking two to some power that's changing. So it's a sub n equals two to the nth power. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, letter C here. So again, if you would prefer to set up a T-chart, you can totally set up a T-chart. I'm just gonna put our term numbers up here. Term one, term two, term three, term four. Okay. Um, it's always gonna start A sub N equals. So our explicit formula, a sub n equals what? How could you set this up? What's happening in the numerator? It stays the same, okay? So your numerator is always gonna be one, right? The numerator hasn't changed yet. It's not gonna change in the future. Um, so how can you relate this number to your denominator, this number to your denominator, this number to your denominator. Remember, these are all your n's, right? First term, second term, third term, Jacob, um, plus four. You're gonna say it's your n value plus four. So this is your explicit formula. Make sense? Why isn't it just plus n plus one on the denominator? Right, so you, if you're doing n plus one, you're saying I'm taking my previous term and I'm adding one to the denominator. That's a recursive formula when you relate it to the term right in, for, right in front of it, and we'll get into that more. An explicit formula is a formula that you should be able to say, okay, I can find my hundredth term right now. So if my hundredth term, that makes N 100, it's not one over 101 when I get to my hundredth term. It would be 1 over 104 when I get to my hundredth term. Because what's happening is my first term is 1 over 5, right? So it's 4 more than that 1 um, in the denominator. 2 plus 4 gets you 6. 3 plus 7. So 100 plus 4 would get you 104 as your denominator. So it has to relate to your term number. It has to relate to that one, two, three, four that we're using. Does that make sense? It'll make more sense the more we do with it, um, but if it's still not clicking by the end of the lesson, talk to me and we'll sit down and look at some of the ones in the homework, okay? Okay, um, that's the explicit side of things. Recursive, okay? Um, recursive is what I was just saying to Jackson here. The recursive formula is always going to relate to the term before it. So recursive formulas are kind of annoying sometimes because you can only find the terms that are close to what you're working with because you have to know the term before it, the term like right in front of it. Um, so if you look here, um, we start with 130 and then 127 and then 124 and then 121. So each time we're subtracting three or you're adding negative three, if you will. Um, so the way that we write the recursive formula, and technically when it's subtracting, it's called arithmetic. So addition and subtraction is an arithmetic formula. Multiplication and division is a geometric formula, okay? I know you've learned that before because that was uh, 
you've done that in algebra and you've done that in geometry. Um, so a recursive formula always has two parts. It always tells you what your first term is. So it's your a sub one. Okay, it'll always go a sub one equals, and then it will always say a sub n equals a sub n minus one, and then something will follow that, okay? This never changes. In a recursive formula, you will always have those two things. So in this one, we say a sub one is our first term, 130, and then a sub n is the term before it, a sub n minus one minus three. Okay, so the term right in front of it, take away three, and you'll get that. So for instance, if I want to find the third term, a sub three, it would be a sub three minus one. What is a sub three minus one? A sub two, right? So you take the second term, 127, and you subtract three. 127 minus three gets me my third term, which is 124. Okay, so it's just what are you doing to the term right in front of it? Um, so look at the second one here. 3 to 15, 15 to 75, 75 to 375. Each time you're multiplying by 5. Okay, so that's a geometric formula. Um, so the way you write this recursive, still the same. A sub 1 always comes first. So my first term is 3. And then my A sub n is the term before it times five. Okay, so whatever your rule is comes right after this stuff. But it always, always, always looks like this. This will never change. You take your a sub one, and then your a sub n equals a sub n minus one, and then you do something to it. You add, subtract, you multiply, you divide. Okay? Um, so that's what this is saying. You will always have your initial condition, a sub one equals, and then you will always have a formula starting with this. So here's my advice to you. When it says write the recursive formula, right off the bat, write this. A sub one equals A sub n equals A sub n minus one, because that will never change. Okay, so that's the start of our recursive formula. And then it says you have 43, 45, 47, 49. So what is A sub one? 43, and a sub n equals a sub n minus 1, what? Plus two. Plus 2. What are you doing to get to the next one? You are adding 2. So this is your recursive formula. Okay, then it says find the eighth term. Now here's the thing. There is no quick way to find the eighth term. What do you have to do? You have to find every term before it, which is why recursives are annoying, because if you want to find the hundredth term with a recursive, you have to find all 100. I will never ask you to do that, but that's what you would have to do with a recursive formula, okay? So this is my first term, my second term, my third term, my fourth term. So what's my fifth term going to be? 51. What's my sixth term going to be? 53. My seventh term? 55, and my eighth term, 57. So A sub 8 is 57. Okay, find the eighth term. It will be 57. Questions on that? Okay, example four says write the recursive formula. So again, start it how we always start it. It's always going to be A sub 1 equals something, A sub n equals a sub n minus 1, and then we just got to fill in some gaps. What is a sub 1? 1 over 1, okay? a sub 1 is 1 over 1. Um, and now you got to figure out what is happening to this term to get this one. What's happening to this term to get this one? What's happening to this term to get that one? Times 1 third, right? If I multiply by a third, I get one third. One third times a third, I get one ninth. One ninth times a third, I get one twenty-seventh. So you're going times one third. Is that geometric or arithmetic? Geometric, geometric right? We'll talk more about that later. That was really just an intro for that. Um, so write the recursive formula. That's your recursive formula.
okay? The blue-green color will never change. It will always look exactly like that. You just need to plug in those two pieces. So recursives are usually pretty simple to come up with. They're just really annoying to use long-term on big numbers, which is why we love explicit, because explicit will find big numbers for you quite easily. Okay, um, get your calculator out real quick, because I want to make sure you're good on... I'm going to show you a quicker way to do this. I've already showed you the quicker way to do this. I'm just going to remind you so that you do it and don't have to do a bunch of extra work in your homework. Um, okay, so this one says find the first five terms of each sequence. Okay. Um, so let's start with the explicit. A sub 1 equals, so you're plugging in a 1 for n. So 1 minus 5 times one plus five, okay? Now, if I were you, plug into your calculator exactly this. I know you can do it in your head, don't. You're just creating more work for yourself if you try to do the mental math every time. Put the parentheses, one minus five parenthesis, and then parenthesis one plus five parenthesis, okay? So you should see that set up, this exactly in your calculator. You get what? Negative 24. Okay, so a sub 1 equals negative 24. Now, don't rewrite that whole process. You're welcome to. In fact, if you want partial credit because you make a silly mistake, it's lovely to see all that worked out again. But all you need to do is go second entry and replace those 1s with a what? 2. To find your second term, go second, enter, arrow over to your 1s and put a 2 in. 2 and 2. What do you get? Negative 21. Do it again. A sub 3. So second enter. And now put 3's in where your 2's were. And you should get negative 16. Okay. Um, and remember, if you can find a pattern, you're allowed to use that pattern. Now this one is not just add something each time, right? So you're probably not going to come up with a pattern real quickly on this one. So I would just put it in my calculator. Second, enter. Now we got fours. And you get negative nine. And then a sub five. Second, enter. Put those fives in. And you get zero. Okay, so when they ask for the first five terms, those are your first five terms. Um, if you want to, you can write them out every time. I don't need to see that from you. You can plug that into your calculator, second enter, second enter, second enter. Okay. Um, a recursive formula, when they ask you to find the first five terms, what is a sub one? What's your first term? Four. That one's always given to you. Don't forget about that. Okay. You already have your first term. Um, a sub two, I'm going to write this out in formula form. A sub 2, my second term, is negative 2 times A sub 2 minus 1, okay? A sub 2 minus 1 is A sub 1. What is A sub 1? Four. It's 4. So this number is replacing your A sub N minus 1, right? The number right before it is what's getting dropped into your formula. So it's um, negative 2. I'm going to rewrite it here negative two times four plus one, right? I'm just plugging into the formula. Um, you get negative eight plus one, so negative seven, okay? So you got your first term, you got your second term. A sub three is negative two times what? Negative seven, the term right before it, plus one, so negative four, uh, positive 14 rather, God bless you, um, plus 1 is 15, okay? A sub 4 is negative 2 times what? 15, the term right before it, plus 1. So negative 30 plus 1 is a negative 29, and then my fifth term is negative 2 times what? The term before it, negative 29 plus 1. So you get a positive 58 plus 1 is 59. OK, 
Okay, so your first five terms are 4, negative 7, 15, negative 29, and 59. Questions on that? Okay. Um, 